Hey, chemist, this is Doust. Hope you're doing well. Figured I would record simulation for those of you who have difficulty accessing it. Doing it yourself would be best, but this will be second place. Uh, we can see here in the center of the simulation, we have an atom of uranium, that's you, with a mass of 235. I'll leave it to you to figure out what the atomic number of uranium should be. That'll be the number that goes down here. Of course, you can find that on the periodic table, such as ptable.com. And we have here a gun. Uh, this gun will fire a gray particle. And the gray particle causes a reaction to occur eventually. What is the gray particle? We can see up here it's going to be a neutron. And uh, we have a uranium-235 atom, that's the big one, and two smaller pieces, which here are just called daughter nuclei. I'll hit reset nucleus, show it again. Boom, there you go. Okay, that is fission with one nucleus. Looking at your handout, I see number one we can already answer uh, because it is showing what the thing we have at the beginning is. That's uranium-235 with that atomic number there. Now this next part, all right, I hit pause down here. Question number two wants us to identify what's the particle that gets formed when the neutron hits 235, and it's this one right here, before it breaks apart. So this will be your answer for number two. Now, uh, this next part for number three might take a while. I'm hitting the step button. Oh, perfect. Uh, and we can see immediately when the reaction happens, there is this yellow circle. Uh, it's supposed to represent a yellow flash of gamma radiation. One of the six things that gets emitted is this yellow flash. And as I hit step, we can see that there are five um, chunks that are made up of atoms. We have this one, that one. Those are going to be two different elements because they have both protons and neutrons. And if you see here, we've got one, two, three neutrons. So just to show you that those neutrons are separate, when I hit step, they fly farther away from each other. So that's going to be your answer for number three. Now, number four, um, we're going to be showing this nuclear reaction using the proper format. So you can see on the left-hand side, I have the 1 over 0 n, that's going to be the symbol for a neutron, plus 235 over 92 u, that is um, the uranium atom we had at the beginning. And step 4 wants, wants us to show what's happening that first part. So basically referring back to question number 2, like what was the first thing that we made? And then question number 5 is like, okay. After we made that first thing, what does it eventually break down into? So I'll hit reset nucleus and remind you, okay, that was the first thing that we made. Kind of representing that with question number four. And then eventually that breaks apart. And what we see here is our answer to question number five. Um, Question number six wants you to talk about the stability of the atom here. So that involves looking at this kind of weird chart at the beginning where there is the potential energy in blue and the total energy in yellow. And what I want you to see is that where the atom is in the center here on the x-axis is important. So it starts off in the middle. We shoot the neutron. It's moving around. Ooh, what happened to it right there? It was here, now it's there. When we shot in the neutron, what did we do to its energy? Well, it went up. And when we hit play, eventually um, those particles were flying out, one to the left, one to the right. Um, but as we look, they're traveling horizontally. So the total energy, the yellow part, never really changed. Question number six is kind of a tough one. so. If you're uh, a little bit stuck on that one, don't sweat it. We'll come back to this point many times in the future. Uh, seven, though, uh, what types of energy are involved in nuclear reactions? 
Well, we have the yellow one, we have the blue one down here. All right, I know I went through part one pretty quick. You may need to go back and rewatch that. Um, I'm going to move on to part two here in just a second, which is going to involve chain reactions. But make sure you feel pretty good about uh, part one. If you need to, you can refer to some of the videos that are linked on the Schoology page. Now, for part two, we're doing the chain reaction. I know it looks like it's the same, you know, right here at the start. Um, what's the difference? Well, one thing is I can adjust where this neutron gun is pointing, but kind of more importantly, I can change the numbers of atoms. So I can have 100 uranium-235 atoms. And uh, question number eight says, what happens when I take this gun and I shoot it? Whoa. Why did they all go? This is a chain reaction. Why did it happen? So let's go ahead and hit reset, and then I'll shoot it. Okay. Now remember, in the one nucleus, we shot a neutron into the uranium-235. It broke apart into those daughter nuclei, you know, whatever they are, and it gave off three neutrons. We'll take a look here. We have these neutrons that are getting released as uranium-235 is breaking apart. And then what are they doing? Well, they're kind of flying in every direction, but as they do that, they're hitting new atoms of uranium-235. And then when those new atoms break apart, they release more neutrons and more neutrons and more neutrons. And sometimes um, we get them all in the first shot. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we have to kind of uh, come back over here. You can laugh at my aim. Oh, doused. That was bad. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, now it's stuck. We'll say that one didn't count. There you go. That time worked. Cool. Hit reset. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so that was if we had 100% uranium-235. 100 nuclei of them and zero of everything else. But what if we made it 0, 0,235 and 100 of a different isotope, uranium-238? And uh, before I shoot and make a prediction, what do you think is going to happen? Well, 238 just turned into 239. Uh, 238 turned into 239. Two thirty-eight turned into two thirty-nine, but look at those two thirty-nines. They're just stable. They're just sitting there. If I had only uranium two thirty-eight, I couldn't have a reaction because it can absorb a neutron, right? It can turn it into two thirty-nine, but that product, the uranium two thirty-nine, it's still stable or stable enough. So um, there's no nuclear reaction that can occur. Now, scrolling down to number 11, um, we're trying to see how having a different ratio of um, 235 to 238 will affect the, the results. So with 100, 235, and 0, 238, that's the first column. I shoot, and boom. Ninety-nine point zero two percent fission the first time. Okay, I think I got it this time. Boom! All right, it took me two shots to get all of them. Sometimes it'll be one shot. Sometimes it'll be two shots. Let's try it with um, maybe seventy percent of that one and thirty of that one. All right, so I can see I've got some of these two thirty-eights in here. I'll just start off by shooting right in the middle. And that was actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Um, let's see if I can get these guys over here. So, well, oh, that was 97.6 the first time. Sorry, first say it's 97.6 the first time around. And for whatever reason, it's kind of frozen right now. So 
it probably would take me three or four times. In this particular case, I don't even know if I could make it because these 239s are blanking it, blocking it. We'll say it took me like four times. That seems reasonable. All right, what if I had 50-50 at the beginning? What would happen? I'm gonna try to aim in there because I see a lot of the 235s. I know if I hit one, it can make more. Through that kind of chain reaction idea. So 76.47% fission that time. And Oh, that was awful. Awful. It wasn't too bad. So that was three, four, awful, five. We'll still say five, six, seven. Eight, nine, because I'm a bad shot, 10. Oh, wow, got lucky on that one. All right, 10 shots it took to get all of them. Uh, I think we can answer question number 12. What happens uh, to the reaction as the proportion of 238 increases? Well, uh, as you can see, if I have more and more 238, the amount of reaction happens, uh, decreases. And if I have 100% uranium 238, the reaction can't occur at all. Oh, in real life, um, there is a, a mixture of uranium 235 and uranium 238 that's naturally occurring. And one of the main um, things that has to happen for a nuclear reaction to occur is to change the amount of 235 to 238. And they do that by separating the 238, leaving more and more of the 235 behind. So question number 13 asks you to say, hey, what do you think is the uh, most efficient ratio of um, uranium 235 to 238? Kind of an opinion question right now. Why don't you uh, jot down your, your opinion there? Now, um, I am imagining many people thought that it would be 100% um, uranium-235. And uh, let's talk about what would that be like if I had 100% uranium-235. I could fit 45 in this smaller size container that produced a lot of energy. That sounds great. Um, but if I change the size of my container, because I'm getting greedy and I want to have um, you know, a lot of power for all my devices, I can fit 92 in this one, it looks like. If I change the size of my container and I have a lot of uranium-235, uh-oh, I've created an atomic bomb. Not good. Hopefully you noticed that uh, in addition to having a lot of uranium-235, having a big enough container is required. It's having, it's called having a critical mass, having enough mass of uranium for it to actually make enough energy to create an atomic bomb. Okay, cool. Well, um, I hope you learned a lot from this one. You may need to watch it again. If you've got questions, um, you can leave comments below. Um, and good luck. Awesome.